Today we're going to talk about the issue of car dealerships and when they try and charge fees that are not allowed under the contract. So my name is Dan Whitney. I'm an attorney. I handle a lot of car cases involving suing car dealerships and finance companies on the never-ending variety of scams and frauds that they'll try to do to anybody. But today uh, I've had an arbitration uh, representing a consumer who bought a car um, and the dealership tried to charge him fees and charges um, that it was not allowed to. So here's what happened. Um, a, a man goes to buy a car, he looks at it, likes it, um, ends up buying it, puts $5,500 down and signs a, signs a finance contract like many of us do when we buy a car because 20 or 30 grand is a lot to get together and put down. So he signs a finance contract. Now. Uh, about 35 days go by and the car has problems and he decides that he does not want it anymore and he calls the lender and then he calls the dealership and they're freaking out because the first payment has not been made which means the lender is going to make them buy the car back under the deal agreement so what happens but he ta he's talking to the dealer and the dealer says you know you need to bring that car back or we're going to repo it from you so he thinks all right, I'll bring the car back. I'll get my down payment back and, you know, that'll take care of it. So he brings the car back. The problem is once he brings the car back, the dealer says, guess what? Now you have nothing. You don't have the car and we're keeping your down payment. He says, why are you keeping my down payment? They say, because you've defaulted on the loan and we're keeping your down payment. In other words, it's a default charge. Of course, that's not what he expected. He got upset. They refused to give it back, and eventually he obtained counsel. So in reviewing the case, we end up filing a lawsuit, and we say to them, you know, what's your basis for not returning this gentleman's down payment after you got your car back? And they said, <laughs> they said, we have a sign on the wall. We have a sign on the wall that sets forth all the fees we can charge when a loan is canceled, which they're saying is what happened here. The loan was canceled when he brought it back and they bought it back. So it wasn't really canceled. It was a buyback. Um, but they're saying we have a sign on the wall that says these are the cancellation fees we can charge. And when he was in the dealership, he saw the sign on the wall. And because he saw the sign with these charges on it, we're going to hold him accountable to these charges. Now, they also gave him a piece of paper when he made his down payment and the piece of paper said this down payment is non-refundable and that's one of the other reasons they relied um, on and decided to keep his down payment and not give it back but here's the problem with all that so there's something called an integration clause and you might say well why does anybody care about what an integration clause is it sounds like a racial thing it has nothing to do with race i mean if anywhere you're not going to get discriminated against it's at a car dealership they're going to cheat you whether you're white black brown any other color anybody should identify with if you want to feel not discriminated just go to a car dealership they'll cheat anybody but the integration clause in the contract simply refers to um, that the entire contract is contained within the contract itself. There's no other documents um, other than the contract that was signed by both parties that includes the agreement. In other words, this contract is the only contract that is going to control the terms of the deal. So importantly, in all finance contracts, pretty much every contract I've seen, there's something called there's something called the integration clause. And what the integration clause is, is a clause that simply says, entire agreement, you and our, and your and our entire agreement is contained in this contract. There are no unwritten agreements regarding this contract. Any change to this contract must be in writing and signed by you and us. Now, so, the evaluation and the assessment of this case significantly turned on what are their remedies under this contract for a default when the first payment is not made and the customer ends up giving the car back. So 
we simply turn to that provision of the contract, default. You'll be in default if you fail to perform any obligation, such as making a payment. And then there's a remedy section. And the remedies include, we can ask you to bring the car back, which is what they did under threat of repossession, but they brought it back. And there's a list of other remedies, simply meaning what the dealership is allowed to do under the contract if there's a default. So we said, okay, well, what I'm, what I'm seeing here is you, you've kept his down payment and you've told him that's non-refundable and you've charged him a total of $3,453 in other fees that you say he has incurred, including $39 a day for the days he had it, 49 cents a mile for every mile he drove it, a restocking fee of 200 a $500 dealer processing fee, which, by the way, was already charged when he bought the car. And so the question is, really what it boils down to, are dealers allowed to charge customers fees based on signs they I don't want to show because it it's got the it's got the dealer's name on it but based on signs that they hang on the wall there's no written agreement to it but it just hangs on the wall and they can say the customer customer you saw this because you saw it you have to pay these fees even though it's not included in the language of the contract and the short answer the short and sweet answer is no if the if the contract that you sign and it most likely is going to be if it's a finance contract if it's fully integrated that contract contains all of the fees charges whatever else that the dealership is going to be allowed to charge you now what it may say is um, you know in your particular state the dealer has opted into you know the closed end credit grantor provisions and certain fees are allowed under that provision well that's fine you just have to look up that provision and see what they're allowed to do but the point is a dealership in my experience cannot hang a list of fees on the wall and then force a customer to pay those fees and withhold their down payment because of those fees or because of something it writes on a receipt uh, that is not then incorporated into the final contract. So to do the analysis, you just have to read your contract carefully. If you have a question, of course, you probably want to seek somebody out who's got experience looking at this. But the bottom line is if, if there's charges hanging on the wall in a car dealership and they're trying to force you to pay or withhold your money because of that, there's a very good chance um, they're just trying to cheat you and they're not going to be allowed to do it. I mean, basically, and the example that I used to illustrate this to the judge in the case today was what that dealership is trying to do is essentially the same thing as if I were to say, which I said to the judge, you know, take a look at this, Your Honor. I know that you know how to read. You probably can read pretty well. And I've got bad news for you. Because the sign says, by reading this, I agree to pay $3,453.66 to the owner of the sign. That's essentially what, that is what the dealership is saying to the client. Now, of course, this is preposterous if everybody who read this sign had to pay, uh, considering this is going to go on YouTube, you know, I'd have millions of dollars and everybody else would be out. But of course, that's preposterous and that's not the way it works in the world. What happens is when parties sign a contract, those terms apply. So, I hope this has been interesting. The moral of the story is read your contract very carefully and that will guide you as to what fees the dealer is able to charge you. So I hope it's been helpful. Uh, if you like this, please leave a thumbs up, uh, subscribe. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Uh, thanks for watching and take care.